over the last year or so, I've been experiencing a big change of heart in how I approach my content, what I talk about, how I do this whole online ministry thing. And I want to talk about it in this video to tell you some of the lessons that I've been learning and highlight some of the errors that I was continually running into. So here's the deal. In my six plus years on social media, on YouTube, you know, when I started, um, I was just trying to make videos really about simple things about the Christian faith. So one of my first videos was, you know, how to be authentic in your faith or how to pray or what it means to put your faith in Jesus and what is faith and all these different things, right? And that was where I began. Quickly, I realized that you know, honestly, I felt like nobody wanted to watch my content. <laughs> and like, you know, when you're get, getting like five, you know, 10, 15 views on a video, you, you start to think, okay, maybe I should switch it up a little bit. And in my mind, somehow then I had taught myself that, you know, people don't really want to watch just like this same old basic stuff on whatever, you know, just simple things like prayer or, um, you know, faith or what does it mean to have joy and, and things like that. But instead, you need to make it exciting and you make it interesting and engaging. And one of the ways that I saw other people doing that was they would talk about things going on in the culture. They'd find, you know, popular, controversial things that somebody said, and they'd bounce off them. They'd jump off of that, and they use that as a springboard to talk about other things or just expound on it. I found that to be a really interesting thing because for me, my goal at that point for sure was to share the gospel, was to help people grow in their faith. And I felt, okay, well, if people are going to watch, they're not going to watch my content before. So let me switch it up. Let me talk about more things that are going on in the culture. And that way, at least people are going to watch my content. I can springboard it to the gospel so I can be authentic to my own faith and what I want to produce and how I want to help people. But at least people are going to click on it. So what did I do? Well, I made videos for years about all types of stuff, reaction to certain types, types of videos, um, commentary on news and all sorts of stuff to try to give people um, a good understanding of the Christian worldview, the biblical worldview, and point people ultimately to the gospel. That was my goal. And I know plenty of people do the same thing online. That's their goal. That's their mission. And so what I'm about to say next isn't meant to tear down those people or to criticize those people um, because a lot of those people are my friends and they have, um, you know, their hearts in the right place and they're doing good work. Um, but for me, uh, my heart wasn't necessarily always in the right place. And the problem was, is that I would get so excited when somebody said something um, like against Christianity, if Logan Paul said something against Christianity, if some popular figure said something that was untrue about Christianity, I'd get so excited because I'm like, I can make a video, I can respond to this, I can tell them like, this isn't right, this is what the Bible actually says, and my audience is going to love it. They're going to eat this up, and they're going to be helped by it, hopefully. Um, but I was like, Dang, this is this is this is an, a good opportunity. So I'd wait for those those opportunities, those things that people would say, so I could react to them, so I could respond to them, and that became just a rhythm of life, regardless of what the topic was or what they said. I always tried to bring it back to the gospel because I knew that was my 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 north star, right? That's the point of what I was doing. If it wasn't about the gospel, if it wasn't about Jesus, it was all for nothing, right? But I felt like I had to play the YouTube game. I really thought I had to play the YouTube game to that extent in order to really do anything on this platform, in order to for people to watch my content and for people to be impacted. Nobody's life is being changed by this message if they're not seeing it, if they're not listening to it. So this is what I need to do in order to get people's attention. Okay, so that was my philosophy. That was somewhat of my philosophy at that point. He was what my internal struggle was because I wanted to make a different kind of content, truthfully. Um, and I was becoming so burnt out on responding or reacting or this is what's going on in the culture or Logan Paul said this or this person did this and this person said this and this movie came out and this is why it's not, you know, all this kind of thing or this piece of music came out and this is why it's not biblical. This is why. And I'm just like exhausted and I'm burnt out and I feel like I've lost my mission. What am I doing? Daily Disciple, what is it about? Is it about responding and reacting to all that's going on in the culture and, and trying to bring it back to the gospel? I mean, that's what it was for a while. And I know that helped a lot of people. And honestly, my heart was in that for a long time. And that's where I was spiritually because that was what I needed. That's what I think, thought my audience needed. But then it became a point where I'm like, dang, I'm just saying the same things over and over again. 
and I'm just responding to the same types of videos over and over again. And I began to look at some of my content, uh, my comments in, in recent videos. And what I noticed, it was a little bit of a shift, especially like around certain topics, LGBT issues or whatever. I, and the comments became very hostile to these people that I was responding to. Um, it, it seemed like there was, it was a fueling almost, or it was a place for, for Christian rage, for Christian outrage to say, oh man, look at what the world is coming to. This is disgusting. This is ridiculous. This is untrue. This is false. You know, these pastors are evil. This is wolves in sheep's clothing. Like, and just a, honestly a place to get out outrage at the world itself. Okay. Um, here's the thing. I think there's definitely a place to be outraged at sin and the fact that we live in a broken world. Absolutely. But it got to the extent where the content that I was making and honestly, it seemed like people's understanding of it and reaction to it was focused so much more on the outside world than it was on 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 you particularly like what you were going through or your struggles or your doubts or you know and and I try to incorporate all that in the content that I'm that I that I've done okay and definitely was not perfect at it but now I'm like seeing a real shift where I'm like I'm kind of done talking about what's out there okay I'm really interested and concerned with what's going on in here I had a long conversation with my wife um, and when we were dating and when we were engaged, like we began to kind of talk about this because one of my insecurities was the type of content that I was making where I felt like I was kind of embarrassed about like, you know, just the, some of the clickbait or some of the, you know, just talking about LGBT issues so much or like things like that where I'm like, it's not that I was embarrassed that I was speaking truth. No, I was, but it was just like, do I do more than that? Like, am I going to expand on that? Like, what, what is my content going to become? And we talked a lot about it. And for me, it was fear. I was like, yeah, I want to talk about all these different things and the scripture lessons that I'm learning in the Bible and, and things that are really more intimate, honestly, to me. Um, the, the personal life, the inner world that we're experiencing as we interact with our faith. And I wanted to talk about these things, but number one, I'm like, okay, I don't think people are going to want to watch. I, I just feel like I have to keep doing what I've been doing. I have to keep reacting to this stuff. I keep I have to keep only hitting on hot button trending topics in order for people to want to watch. And it was also an internal fear of me, like for me, an insecurity of mine to be like, well, surely I couldn't just like talk and people would want to watch it. I have to respond to something interesting or I have to touch on something hot button because that's why people are going to want to watch. And I had to hone back in and my wife kind of helped ground me in this to be like, what does God want you to do? <laughs> like really, like, and, and it's so easy to get lost. Like I, I, it's so easy to get lost to be like, what do I need to do to make this work? Or how do I make this work? And, and you're like, well, what does God actually want you to do? Because God has been the one guiding you this whole time. And yes, you've definitely made some mistakes. Absolutely. But, but that's been the intention to follow what God wants you to do. And I was just like, well, I feel like I just need to stop making the stuff I'd been making before. And I made that decision um, about a year ago to just be like cold turkey, be like, okay, I'm just going to make different kind of content. And maybe you haven't noticed it as much and that's totally okay. Like it's not as much um, that, that I think there's going to be a huge outward difference of like, oh wow, he's really switched up his content. But more for me as I'm making it to be like, I don't need to make the content that I think, you know, tons of other Christian content creators are making. I can make different kinds of content. I can talk about different kinds of things. And maybe to you, it doesn't feel like I'm doing that, but to me, it does, right? To me, it does. And my heart, heart posture is a lot different than it used to be. It used to be, how can I hone into something that's really pot and, and something that's going to, you know, get clicks in order for me to deliver a gospel message, okay? That was because I, I wanted to help people. I want to lead people to God. But now it's a lot less of that and, and more like, okay, hey, if you are interested in something different, something slower, something less hurried, something less sensationalized and controversial, if you're interested in growing, growing as a person in your faith, um, you know, becoming a whole person, healing uh, learning to be authentic, learning to work through your insecurities and your own doubts and your own questions and just the, the the simple personal struggles of life as we walk through our faith. Like, 
okay, like, come on in. I'm learning. I, I want to help you walk with Jesus. Like, that's what daily disciple is about, walking with Jesus daily as a disciple. Uh, it's not about all that other stuff that's going on out there. So um, that's what I where I've been. Uh, one of the things that was so impactful for me was uh, reading this story, uh, one of the books that I really have enjoyed. Um, I don't agree with everything in the book, but it's been helpful, uh, is Practicing the Way by John Mark Comer. I believe that's what it's called. And in this book, he talks about he talks about this this old man. I believe that he spent time with, and this guy was a theological giant of the faith, at least in his eyes. But instead of getting, you know, always going to him for theological advice or like trying to get wisdom out of him, or or like, you know, that wasn't what this guy primarily served to John. It was his presence. It was this guy's, this old man's presence to John that was this deep sense of peace this deep sense of, of restfulness and of, of closeness, of intimacy, of, of connection, of relationship, like these kind of things, it changed him. He said it changed him. And it made me think like so much of what we see online is about, okay, this hurried, like get some information off quick or keep it entertaining, keep it engaging, keep it blah, 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 blah. But maybe what we need more of, and this is maybe what I want to offer to you, is a friend that you can sit down with, that you can have a conversation with, that you can talk about the the personal things of life, the real nitty gritty of what we're going through emotionally and spiritually in order that we might find healing, in order that we might grow together, in order that we might build in relationship with one another. That's not, that's disconnected from the world of this is what's going on out there. And isn't the world such a crappy place? And oh man, this person said this, or this person said this, or this satanic thing is going on. But instead, hey, what's going on with you? How can I help you grow in your faith right now? And sure, I, I, I'm thankful to all the people that do have different focuses in their online ministry, and that's awesome. And I support them if they're doing it in a biblical way, and there's plenty of guys that are. I hope you've been enjoying the content over the last year or so, six months, that maybe has felt a little bit different. I'm going to continue on that path, and I think everyone on Patreon that supported me in this, that that knows that my heart is to help them follow Jesus daily and help other people out there, like walk with Jesus and have faith in him and and that and experience life with him. That is so fun. That is so amazing. Um, thanks to everyone who supports me. That is a huge blessing because I want to do it differently. I don't want to play the YouTube game necessarily. You have to play it to a degree, but but it's it's so nice to make more videos that, that are feel authentic to where I am. So thank you for allowing me to do that. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, God bless.